What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me. Today's canvas size is 2500 by 2500. The brushes that we're going to use is the oil paint as well as the studio pen and the colours are up on the screen now as well but you can also download the colours from the description. And with all that said, let's get started. So once you've created your canvas size, you're going to want to go up to your colours. And in the palette, I've just added black, white and red because they're the only colours we're going to need for today. I'm going to switch it out to black. And then we're going to go to our brush library. And then under painting, we're going to use the old brush. Now my brush size is set to roughly 6%. Firstly, we're going to draw in the floor and then we're going to add the mountain on top of it. Now what we're going to want to try and do for this is just draw a straight line first as a guide and then we can fill it all out just to make sure that your landscape is perfectly straight. So we're going to start on this left hand side and then push across the screen, hold your pen at the end to get a perfectly straight line and then pop your finger on the screen. See it goes perfectly horizontal and let's leave an even gap on either side. So something roughly like that. And then if we zoom in, I'm going to tilt slightly so I can get my angle better. We're going to expand on the floor and sort of send it a little bit further backwards and also bring it further down. So we're going to thicken it up basically. So going backwards and forwards with this brush, we're just going to continue up and down that line just to flush out the floor and then you kind of want to get lighter towards the top so it fades out like so and then maybe add a little bit more of this brush a little bit further down towards the bottom here which is ultimately going to be our shore so something roughly like that is good so we've got quite a dark line towards the bottom and it fades out towards the top now i'm just going to grab my cursor quickly and the freeform option and just make it a little bit wider and then position it nicely until i get that orange line down the middle so let me know it's in the center. Now on the same layer, we're gonna draw in the mountain because this brush will start to blend all the different colors together. So all we're gonna do is just simply sort of draw a triangle on this right hand side. So we're just gonna draw like a curved sort of point up into here somewhere. And then let's just draw in then the other side like so as a simple guide and now you know where to go. And then we're just gonna fill it out really. We're gonna sort of at the bottom, I'm gonna go up and down, up and down, up and down at the very bottom and curve my angle of my pen so that the curvature of the mountain starts to go outwards, outwards, and then it's very straight on. And then repeat the process just above that. So I'm gonna up and down, up and down, up and down. Curve in your pen as you make your way around. And likewise at the top, do exactly the same, like so. And then we're gonna keep building on this because now that's our sort of foundation of all of our lines and our movement. We can blend the bottom into the ground. So we're just doing a nice curved flick there to blend in the bottom of the mountain. See how it nicely then swoops down into the bottom there. And then I'm gonna simply continue all the way around and likewise around here as well. So sort of blending that bottom part in. And then we can just simply keep adding lots and lots of color on top until you're happy with it, to be honest with you. So this right hand side, if we were to draw a line straight down the middle, the right hand side is going to be slightly darker. So we can press a little bit firmer on this side and just continue just to curate those nice curves down in towards the bottom. So I'm just going all the way back over myself. And like I said, this brush will build up on itself and you'll really start to see those colors layer on top of one another and you'll create all your, your lumps and your bumps in there. And don't worry if you go a bit too dark on this side because when we add the snow on top, it's gonna get removed anyway. So creating these black in here, really punching out the black. And then towards the edge, I'm trying to go sort of a little bit firmer, but just to define the outside of the mountain. So something roughly like that is good and again, I'm not interested in the fact that it's pretty dark for now because we'll add the snow on it and we'll get rid of it. So continuing through into this point and every time you sort of continue to draw on top of yourself, this brush is smudging out the color that you've added underneath. So you'll eventually get some lovely smooth lines like here. And then I'm gonna just fade out the bottom here. So I'm creating those sort of curves as they flick down the bottom of the mountain. Let's now try and add in a lot more color up here. And then let's go back to this side and really punch out this darkness over here. 
So that's actually looking pretty good as a foundation. If we switch out now to white, we want to add white primarily towards the top and a lot towards the left hand side as well. So you can now layer on top of yourself your white color and then just in nice short bursts, make your way down the mountain towards a point that you're happy where the snow would end. So I'm happy that sort of the snow would end roughly around about this point here. And you can already start to see how that mountain's gonna to come together. Now this style is meant to look very painting-y like. So we're not going for hyper detail in here. We're going for that painting look, nice and smudged. And uh, it looks really cool when it's done. So we'll continue to just add that white in. Now, because the sun's gonna be in the middle, we want the right-hand side of the mountain to have a little bit more white to it, simply because the snow on that side then wouldn't be melting. So maybe we add in a slightly whiter patch towards the top here. Something like that, it's looking pretty good. And all of these sort of lines, when they build up on top of each other, I think add a ton of texture into your mountain side. So I'm gonna add in even more white now. Every time you press a little bit firmer as well, you start to add in even more white, make it even punchier. And then I'm just gonna go down here ever so slightly and just decrease some of these very dark patches by stroking over with white. So it's a very up and down motion with this tutorial. And then let's smudge in that top line. But I quite like those sort of darker areas in here, the grays that really come through, which define your mountain a bit more. And then punching out a little bit more white on this left-hand side, we're nearly there with the mountain. Maybe we push the snow a little bit further down the edge here. Something like that is good. Now at this point, you could leave it. You could also go back in and add in some more black if you wanted to. You could actually go in, in my design, and just darken up this side a tiny bit by just putting some very light streaks over the top of the white just to really sort of separate the two sides and then maybe you could even go in and add some really dark patches in this side of the mountain like so so that's our mountain done what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to the sun in the background so we're going to go to our colors we're gonna select the red color. We're gonna grab our brush library and the calligraphy option of the monoline brush. And then let's go up to our layers. Let's create a new layer. And then on this new layer, let's draw in a circle. It doesn't matter about your brush size. Hold your pen at the end to get a perfect ellipse and pop your finger on the screen to get a perfect circle. And something size wise, roughly around about that is good. So slightly taller than our mountain. Drag and drop the color in. Now all we're going to use this for is a guide for the sun that we're going to paint in. So we're going to grab our cursor, let's make sure it's perfectly in the centre by getting that orange line down the middle. And if you need to find that orange line, go to snapping and turn on snapping and you'll see that orange line run through the middle. Tap on your cursor when you're done. We're going to go to our layers, we're actually going to go and create a new layer. Then on this circle we're going to tap on it, we're going to use the option of select. Make sure colour fill is turned off just in case you have it turned on. We're going to go back to our new empty layer. We're going to tap on it and we're going to use the option of mask. And then we're going to go and get rid of our selection. We're going to go to the red circle and delete it. Now what we've done is we've created a layer up here that is the same size as that circle, but it's completely transparent at the minute. And then we've got our empty layer and we can draw within the same circle. So we're going to go back on our brushes. We are going to go back to painting and the old brush and size exactly the same. We're gonna continue with this red. And all we're gonna do now is draw in in that circle. So start, first of all, start by drawing in from the right hand side. You kind of want this edge here of the circle to be defined, but this edge here not so much. So just continue to make streaks across the screen in a nice horizontal fashion. And you'll start to outline the right hand side of the circle. And then continuing all the way down the circle in behind. I really liked in this where the sun is in behind my mountain. So you end up getting it coming through a little bit with the red. Which look pretty cool. Let's continue. And then you roughly get something like this where some 
parts here on the right are really defined, but it fades completely out on the left hand side. And now continue to go back over yourself every time, but pressing slightly harder and build up that color coming in from that side and be brave at points to add in more and more color. But eventually we're gonna end up with a really punchy red sun. So I kind of got even more color there. I'm gonna go even harder now from that right hand side to bring the color all the way into the circle. So I'm starting out here, bringing that red in. That's a nice red streak in there now. Like so. And then likewise, all the way down to the bottom of the circle as well, just to define it in behind there. Now, just to make sure it is in behind there, just go to your layers, grab your mountain layer and just position it on top. And then only a little bit of the red will come through. And then we'll go back to that layer and just continue to add that in. And then where it gets a little bit faint over here, maybe you could go in and just in the center, sort of just push this red all the way to the edge a bit more can create a little bit of a defined edge to this circle. It's not critical that it's not, but I quite liked that it's nice and faded out. And I'm going to continue now, add even more red over this right hand side. So we end up with something very close to this, adding in lots more red on that right hand side. And every time you continue to draw in a new streak, it blends in with the previous ones as well. So you really do build up the color in this brush. Like so. And then you'll end up with something like this. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly grab my cursor because my lines were pointing down ever so slightly. Just rotate your sun if you did the same so that your lines are going nice and horizontal. And we end up with our sun behind our mountain. Next step is to then merge those two layers together. So let's pinch our mask onto our circle when you're done. Let's then pinch our mountain and our sun together. Let's then swipe that to the left and duplicate it. Then the bottom one out of the two, let's grab our cursor. Let's flip it vertically and drag it down. Make sure you get these blue lines on either side to let you know that you've perfectly dragged it straight down from itself. And then I've left a little bit of a gap here because what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna leave that as is for the moment and potentially just lower the opacity down to 50% for a second. And then the top one out of the two that's still pointing the same way that we drew it initially, I'm gonna grab my color, I'm gonna grab black. I'm gonna go and continue with the old brush still. And I'm just gonna expand on the floor ever so slightly here, just in front where the land really does meet the water. So just expanding on this edge here and bringing it out a little bit more just to separate it and overlap it a little bit to the water underneath, like so. Now what we're gonna do is just use our smudge tool. And if you tap on the smudge, you'll get your brushes as well. And we're gonna use the old brush and the size for that is 24%. And then on the canvas, we are then gonna simply smudge this left to right, left to right until we blend out a lot of the colors. Now let's make sure we go back to our layers and the reflection. Now make sure you do not push your smudging off to the edge. You wanna try and keep your sort of illustration down the center here so, so it's nice and minimalistic in the center. So we're just gonna potentially even push in from this side and just smudge the lines across like so. And then likewise, this red also needs to be smudged in a little bit. And you'll end up with a really nice looking smudged reflection. And then right towards the bottom here, go a bit crazy if you want to and push them out even further, just where it's really dispersed as it gets really close to you. So you end up with a really nice faint look of colors. Now I'm gonna grab my two layers, I'm gonna swipe on both of them and grab my cursor and just position them perfectly in the center of the canvas. I'm gonna move it up until I get the orange line down the center and also horizontally as well. And then tap on the cursor when you're done. That way we keep our frame nice and tight to the middle of the design. Next, we're gonna to go to our layers now. We're gonna add the, the sort of structure here in the water. So we're gonna to go to our layers and create a new layer. Let's go to our brush library. We're gonna to go to inking and we're gonna find our studio pen. Now my pen size is set to 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw in the structure. So the first thing you're going to want to do is draw a straight line for the two pillars on either side. So what we're going to do is we're going to start roughly here and then hold your pen at the end to get a perfectly straight line and then you want to position it slightly off from straight upwards, so slightly inwards like so. Let's grab our layer, let's swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Let's grab our cursor and flip it horizontally and then drag it across and because you've left snapping turned on still you should end up with these blue lines to let you know you've perfectly moved it across from itself. Let's then pinch those two layers together on our layers and then grab our cursor one more time just to make sure we've positioned it with the orange line straight down the middle of the design like so. Let's then draw in the rest of the details. So let's grab our layer, let's create a new layer and then we're going to draw a horizontal line now. So we're going to press again with sort of the same firmness and then hold your pen at the end to get a perfectly straight line and pop your finger on the screen also to make sure it's perfectly horizontal to the canvas and something like that is pretty good. You can always grab your cursor at the end and then make sure you get that orange line run down the middle so it's nice and horizontal. And we want to position it slightly lower than the top, such as that. Then we want to grab our brush and just increase the size ever so slightly up to 40. We're then going to go ahead and pinch those layers together because we're done with those now. Let's create another new layer. And we're going to do exactly the same now. We're going to draw another horizontal line, but slightly wider than the one that we drew before. And with a good amount of pressure on the screen and then pop your finger on the screen also to make sure it's nice and horizontal. And again, as always, let's just make sure everything's nice and tidy, grab your cursor, and then make sure you get that orange line run down the middle. And then the final touch now is to actually then grab this layer and duplicate it. Let's move the bottom one slightly further down, like so. Then on the top one out of the two, so the higher one, turn it on and off just to be sure. You're gonna grab your cursor, you're gonna grab the warp tool. If we zoom in, what we wanna end up doing is we wanna push these outer edges slightly up and create a nice curve. So you can grab the first part of it, like so, and then also the top part on this side as well, create a nice curve, but then grab the bottom as well, as well as the middle. You're gonna to have to do all three because the warp tool split into three, so something like that. So you have to grab the middle, push that up as well, and then also grab the bottom and push that up as well. Now don't worry if it's not touching right now, we can sort that out in a second. Now if you want to, you could go even higher with this nice curved flick and move all of the parts up together, so the middle, the bottom, and the top. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. I'm gonna move that back up again, that up again. And also then the bottom as well. You should end up with a nice curve in your beam. Just grab your cursor and then go back to the uniform option and just drag it down until it touches the top of your design, like so. And now we can go ahead in here and add in some extra detailing inside this. So let's go to our layers. Let's pinch all three of these together. Let's then grab our actions and then we're gonna to go to canvas, drawing guide, and turn it on, edit the drawing guide to make sure it's symmetry and then hit done. And then on this layer, it should say assisted now, which means anything we draw on one side draws on the other so we can make sure everything's nice and symmetrical. Lower the brush size all the way down to say 5%. And then we're just gonna add in some small details here. So some support maybe under here. So a little block in there, likewise on this side too. It's a little block. And again, everything you draw on one side also gets reflected on the other, but your brush and your beams may be slightly different thicknesses at either end. So you may have to go in and just make sure you've added that in perfectly on either side. Let's then add in another support under here as well. And going across like that, add in some nice detailing. And then let's also add in these nice little flared bits up here. So it's like a little triangular point. And likewise here too. I'll hold my pen down here just to make sure I kind of match up the same to the other side and then draw that in. And then we're also gonna draw in a middle support here and continue to thicken it up 
like that to end up with some nice detailing in there. And then the only thing I want to do is I want to tail off these edges. I don't like that they're rounded. So I'm gonna grab my eraser here. I'm gonna to go to the option of calligraphy and the monoline brush. I'm gonna make it fairly large and I'm just gonna simply dash into here and hold my pen at the end to create a dash in there. And it's okay that the other side doesn't match. And then I'm also gonna do the same here just to create a nice straight line off the edge. And then likewise here too, I'm just gonna create a nice straight line off the edge just to clean up those edges and create that nice swooping point on either side. And if we pinch out, we've got our structure. Let's go ahead then and reflect it in the water below as well. So we can actually go to our actions now and turn off the drawing guide. We can then go to that layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Then on the bottom one out of the two, let's tap on it and flip it vertically, drag it down like so until the points are definitely touching. And we can even just grab our freeform option just bring it down a little bit. I don't want the top of the frame here to be in though because it will add quite a lot of black right on the edge of the design. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our smudge tool. And then we're gonna go back to our layer. We're gonna turn off the drawing assist so we make sure we don't end up reflecting it all perfectly. I'm actually gonna reduce the brush size for this one because it's quite a small piece. Let's go to about 18%. And what you wanna try and do is just leave a little bit of black towards the base here so that we've got a nice solid sort of shadow reflection. And then everything down here, you wanna smudge out as much as you can until it's like completely gone. So you can push from all the way out here, all the way out here and continue just to disperse those lines until you end up leaving a good amount here at the base, as I mentioned, and then go back in and smudge out everything else that you're not happy with until you end up with a nice clean set of faded out lines like so. So I got rid of everything there at the bottom pushing in from either side until you end up with a nice smooth reflection like so. And I'm just smudging out a little bit more here towards the edges just so I get a nice smooth white edge down here. And then if I pinch out with two fingers and I pop my pen on top of the iPad and go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, drop a like down below. And if you'd like weekly tutorials, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. As always, be sure to share your designs with me on Instagram. The links are in the description down below. And as always, a big shout out to my patrons, where if you'd like to get extra tutorials every single month that are exclusive to patrons, hit the link in the description down below and go ahead and show your support. And I'll see you in the next one.